Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode three of the Nordic Puko Knife Build Series where I'm teaching you how to build a Nordic style knife. This episode, we're gonna put a handle on it. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. This week on the Handle Material Showdown, we're doing fossilized mammoth tusk and Sonoran Desert Ironwood. These are fantastic materials. Let's make a knife handle. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about these a little bit. This is the fossilized mammoth tusk. Uh, this tusk, you can see when, when it was fossilized, the tusk itself, the different layers of ivory separate and they kind of pull apart. So you end up with these voids in the tusk area. So what they do is they cast these as a hybrid with a resin. Um, this was a really neat one. This was a full piece and it broke in half during shipping. So, you know, the vendor that I got this from was super incredible with me and gave me a discount and I got some more and he let me keep this. So I'm gonna utilize this in this knife that I'm making. I'm making a Puko style knife. This tusk is gonna be the forward section and then I've got an A plus piece of Sonoran Desert Ironwood. This is an amazing block. It's absolutely perfect. Now, of course, with any woods or burls, you could always find a void when you start cutting into this. Um, let's hope that that's not the case. When you tap on it, it's super solid everywhere, so I don't think we're gonna find any voids in there. And uh, I think this is gonna be an absolutely incredible handle. I'm making a Puko knife, and I'm also doing a video series on how to make a Puko knife. This is how to make the handle, but basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try to line these up you know, this is something I always try to do when I put handle materials together, is I look at the flow of the material. And I thought that this was kind of cool how the tusk rings flow like this, and I thought that I could have it flow right into the lines of the ironwood. So I'm going to try to kind of line that up like that right there so that, you know, some of these lines kind of line up. Now, once I grind this and shape this, those lines may not line up afterwards, but right now, you know, visibly, looking at it, trying to line some stuff up. Hey, why not, you know, go the extra mile. This is how I'm gonna do it. Um, I am going to not put a spacer in here. I'm gonna just clean up these surfaces and I'm gonna glue them together like that. Fossilized mammoth tusk stinks. Oh boy, does it stink. It is exactly like, say, burning hair, grinding deer antler, very stinky. Even though it is fossilized, it retains the exact same smell when you grind it. Now let's, now let's do the ironwood. Man, I don't know which one is worse, the ironwood or the fossilized mammoth tusk. This one smells like old cigars or cat pee, and this one smells like burning hair and singed fingernails. Yuck! Both of these stink tremendously. But hey, you know what? At least I'm making the shop stink all at the same time. Check this out, we're gonna go ahead and put the guard on next. Right here, we're gonna go ahead and put this on. We'll uh, put the handle on next and uh, glue it up and then we'll be able to shape the handle and finish the knife, which is super cool. All right, so here we are. Here's our handle material. Now all we're gonna do is decide where in there we want. And I am gonna go right there. Okay. 
Okay, so mammoth tusk chips. It chips really easily. So just know if you're going to drill a hole for a pommel nut or something like that, you're going to need to use an end mill because a regular drill bit tends to walk. And if it walks at all, it puts lateral pressure and causes a chip. Um, I tried to put tape over this and that didn't help either. The end result was an end mill worked the best because an end mill cuts on the side and it didn't walk at all. So possibly the end mill is sharper also. In any case, this won't really matter because this is getting filled with epoxy on this one. But just a note on this material right here, it, uh, it chips really bad. A note on this material, this material clogs up the drill bit really bad. Every single time that I put the drill bit down and pulled it up, even if I was only taking little tiny pecks at it, I'd have to take a razor blade and clean out the flutes of the drill bit because this ironwood would get stuck in the flutes of the drill bit. So anyhow, those two tips for these materials right here as I'm working them. I'm ready for glue up. These are already ready to go. Are you ready? Let's get this in focus. Here we go. Oh, that hamon. Oh, look at that mammoth tusk. Holy moly. So beautiful. Absolutely spectacular. You know, I'm thrilled with how that came out. Horrible experience smelling it as you work with it. But whatever, the beauty, the beauty, oh, so gorgeous. And it really worked out how I got these lines to kind of flow through. You know, I mean, I, I, they're not perfect, but hey, like I said, as, as I started to work the block, I had the lines lined up perfect as it was still in a block. But as you can see, the grain kind of travels through. So those lines are going to shift as you reduce the size of the block. But uh, hey, you know what? They still have a type of fluidity to them. Oh, I love this. Love it, love it, love it. Tell me what you guys think. There's the textured guard right there. Textured guard.
that came out super cool. And you know guys, I'd like to point out, I don't like to leave a lot of material here and here on any of my guards. You know, I don't think it looks right when there's an interrupted area right here from the transition from the handle into the blade. So I like to get that as thinned out as possible. Now on this, because it is a round guard, I left a little tiny bit of material to clear the corners of the knife. And then down here, just a little bit of material to clear where the edge of the knife is. Other than that, you know, this is a Puko knife. So the idea is there's no finger guard. This is not a stabbing knife. This is a knife for slicing, dicing, cooking, you know, everyday carry knife like that. This is a larger than normal Puko knife. Definitely a large Puko knife. But man, everybody I've shown this knife to has absolutely fallen in love with it. This is an awesome knife. I'll definitely be doing more of these. I'll probably do some with the smaller blade also. This came out great. This won't be the last one you guys see. And uh, I'm really excited to see on the next episode where I build the sheath for this knife. Wow, that handle came out amazing. That mammoth tusk ivory is gorgeous. It polishes out so beautiful. Made it up against that iron wood that also polishes out so beautiful. What a great combination of handle materials. And I think it really fits the knife. It feels old and rustic yet fine and refined. It's, it's a great touch. I love it. Hopefully you guys feel the same. Tell me down in the comments. So here's the deal. I'm going to put a link right here to episode number four where I'm going to build a traditional style Nordic uh, Puko sheath. But of course, you know me, I'm going to put my own spin on it. So I'll see you guys over there on the fourth episode. Thanks for watching, guys.